Star Wars is the hottest thing in the world right now, other than Elden Ring, of course. The real dream come true would be combining them into a Star Wars Souls game. A good Star Wars Souls game. Maybe Jedi Survivor will be really good when it comes out next year, but I would rather say hello there to a game today. That's why I'm continuing my quest to find the most fun character build in Elden Ring by building Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you want to watch these runs live, you can join my Patreon at the $1 tier. That's where I do these. I could do a Twitch, but that's $5 for a sub, and I already have a Patreon, so Patreon credits will do fine. We're going to start off as an astrologer. If you want to know the Star Wars, you've got to know the stars. The grafted scion jumps down, so we jump down because we don't have a lightsaber or any force powers yet. It's Jedi pacifism. I knew jumping wouldn't actually kill us. We just wake up in a cave and head out into a beautiful world. We buy a crafting kit for later from Santa. Maybe he's from the holiday special. Leia meets us at a grace and gives us a horse. We have to help her. We're her only hope. First thing we need is a lightsaber, so I I head south. There's a knight's cavalry on the bridge, and I remember seeing a video of it being cheesed, so I tried to Jedi mind trick it to death. Doesn't work. Whoops. Moving on. South of Lake Agil is the Royal House Scroll, which we can use in a second to get our glowing blue laser sword. But I don't know how to forge it, so we need to find a Jedi Master, and get a better handle for it. Both are in Kamino. It's a watery place, but in this game they call it Lernia. After we sneak around the big starting castle in Limgrave, we can ride across a broken bridge along a mountain path and over a lake to an ancient Jedi Academy, the Carrion Study Hall. At the top is the Carrion Glintstone Staff, which boosts Carrion Sword spells, but we we need a carrion spell to boost. A little further north in the Church of Vows, Yoda is wearing a Pope hat. In this game, Yoda is a dog, and he'll teach us how to use a lightsaber, but not for free. Making money without killing things is hard. That's why there are so many bounty hunters. I have an idea though. It's just a bit of a field trip. Back to Limgrave, skip a zombie boat guy, jump off some cliffs and find a church with a juice box. We'll eventually get some blue milk for it a bit later. For now, lightspeed jump behind the church to head to Moss Isley, a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Scoot past a dragon and up to the gray old dragon, but we're not killing it. We don't have bleed, rot, or frostbite at the moment, so 87,000 HP without percentage of damage is gonna take uh, too long. Instead, I'm sneaking into Fort Faroth for the Golden Rune 12 and Radigan Sword Seal, which I can sell, if I remember to sell it. I don't. Then I go to the Divine Tower of Caled because I remember there being a rune somewhere on the outside of it. I don't exactly remember where it was and kept dying while trying to climb ladders. So I just skip that and go back and buy the lightsaber from Yoda, the Carrion Slicer. It's a relatively fast spell that makes a blue laser sword in front of you. It works on a horse, you can jump with it. Basically, it's a regular sword without a strong attack that requires a bit of magic for every attack. Not a lot of magic though, and the damage more than makes up for it, especially after we level up our intelligence enough to use the Carrion Glintstone staff for a 15% damage boost and level up the carrion staff with some smithing stones from the Limgrave Tunnel. I decided not to head all the way to the bottom to fight the troll. I don't really need anything from him. Instead, we head to the Murkwater Cave, where some basic Sith Inquisitor is gatekeeping a pickle dealer. Beating this Sith also starts our quest to befriend Anakin Skywalker, so it's very important. You wouldn't know it from this footage, since I beat the Sith so fast, Anakin doesn't even show up, but he's there. Inside the Murkwater Cave, this sketchy guy wants to sell us some death sticks, but he doesn't really want to sell us some death sticks. He wants to go home and rethink his life, especially after we slice him up a bit. This guy decides to go legit, and then he sells pickles instead. Obi-Wan loves pickles, and so do I. They give us more experience. Remember how we didn't kill the gray old dragon? We need experience. It's honestly kind of weird fighting Margit at level 15. Like, I'm not a level 40 master. Can I even do this? Yeah. It's not really even that hard. Quinlan Voss is hanging out nearby, so we summon him to help us out. There isn't a lot of strategy to discuss here. Just sorta, uh, don't get hit and hit Margit more. I think the most notable thing is, despite our level being considerably lower than in previous runs, our damage is comparable. Maybe even better. Take him out first try. It could be that Obi-Wan is just better, but I think it's because having two Jedi at the same time is kind of overwhelming for a boss. Let's make sure we always have two Jedi.
Unfortunately, you can't have a Padawan until you're a master, unless you're Anakin, I guess. To become a master, we'll start off getting some blue milk that lets us deal more damage. That's being guarded by an Erdtree avatar, and the Erdtree avatar being guarded by a bunch of Minotaurs. Our lightsaber doesn't really stun them, so if I don't clear them out first, they're gonna team up with the large boy and gank us to death. On my first attempt, I tried to bait them into getting hit by the avatar's big glowing booty, but I couldn't kite them well enough, and for some reason, the avatar didn't want to give me that butt. Our vigor is still low, so getting hit more than once means we're gonna die. That's why I died four times. Eventually though, I slow down enough, contain my greed, and win with a couple hits when it's safe. Greed leads to punishment. Punishment leads to death. Death leads to salt. Salt is not the flavor we want with blue milk. Blue milk is to boost our magic damage by 20%. Sacking with the carrying boost, that's more than 30%. I like that. The next step is sharpening our blade, or I guess lightening it. Either or. There's a bunch of kyber crystals in Lernia, some above the lake and some in the Raya Lucaria crystal cave. At the bottom is a living kyber crystal. It's kind of a tradition in these runs to get here with no flasks left and then die. This boss isn't hard, but if you're not dealing blunt damage, it doesn't flinch until you break its armor. So I took a few too many silly hits and I die and I come back down and I get the win. It gives up the smithing stone bell bearing one, which we can use to level up other items that that I'm definitely going to get. There's another Erdtree avatar in the Weeping Peninsula I want to take out for a force shield. It's earlier than the first one we did, so it's easier. Not really worth talking about a whole lot. We can meet our apprentice back in Limgrave, where he's supposed to help us fight Nergis. He would have if we weren't so strong. He just needs our help fighting a baddie at Jedi Academy, and I'm happy to oblige. Anakin is my brother, after all. I don't remember this from the Clone Wars, but apparently Anakin and Obi-Wan fight Dark Claw from Amalgam Comics? Kind of fitting. We've built Wolverine and Batman in other videos, so it would make sense. Kind of. Sadly, we don't have enough magic for him the first time, so Anakin has to finish him off. Anakin can't finish him off, so let's go back with more magic and get that W. Further up the Jedi Academy, there's an Alabaster Lord we can kill to get Gravity Well. That's our Force Pull. Here's a demonstration of how it works. <laughs> Okay, it's a fine spell. It's useful in some scenarios, but it's pretty situational and really slow. I kind of forget I have it and just beat the bosses that it would be useful against without using it because, you know, I never think to use it. I'll just use the lightsaber. Anyway, higher and higher. There's a Sith dog. Very cool concept. I feel bad for killing it. Sorry, Sith dog. It's a no from me. Outside and around the corner is our prize, the Radigan Icon Talisman, which shortens our spellcasting time slightly, very, very slightly. The next step to training is making training easier. We are practicing to practice. Back in Kaled, we enter the abandoned cave and immediately stop having fun. This cave is like the Naboo scenes of Attack of the Clones. I would blame nobody for skipping it. There's rot on the floor. Sometimes the geysers at the beginning decide to rush it early, but most of the time you can get around it. Then there's this little step right before the boss, and if you don't make the jump, you get poisoned. It happens every time until I slowed down and figured it out. Slowing down is the solution, it turns out. When you're sprint jumping at the hill, it doesn't work. When you walk jump at it, it works. Don't know why. Like I said, I had a few tries to figure this out, because the clean rot knights are a rough putt. When you're already poisoned when you enter the arena, and don't have a buddy with with you and haven't gotten to cheese up 30 levels from a sleepy dragon in Kaelin. But after I get there without getting poisoned, I'm able to take the first one out fast enough and the second one isn't much trouble either. Always two there are, the master and the apprentice. That's the Elden Ring philosophy of boss design. These two give you the golden scarab, which boosts your rune acquisition by 20%. Now that we'll get more experience, we can go get the lightsaber lighter. Up the ruin strewn precipice, we'll grab a bunch of kyber crystals and come face to face with a fire rancor. He's easy and slow and I ran out of magic and died. Whoops. Then I died again, just because I got greedy. That's on me. I guess he is marginally harder as Obi-Wan since the carrion slicer provides almost no poise damage. We're not breaking posture or even slightly staggering anything. I'm a little spoiled by that, so I'm adding it to my list of Johns. I decided to go up the mountain first to level up the staff and grab a few more runes before we take on General Grievous in Stormvale Castle. We could take the long way around, but running through the main gate is way faster as long as we can avoid some ballista bolts. Thankfully, I'm one with the Force, and the Force is with me. I got shot, 
At the end of the castle, Padme Amidala is hoping to help us fight General Grievous, but she's already swapped into her Thor Love and Thunder attire and fighting style. Attack of the Clones would have been cooler if Padme had a lightning axe. We say hello there to General Grievous and quickly say goodbye there, since he's a pretty early boss and the carrion slicer rips through everything like tissue paper. I could have used a blaster, it would just be so uncivilized. Because I'm really close to hitting another level, I think I'm just gonna go kill the tree sentinel in Limgrave to round myself off. It's not like I'm gonna have another opportunity to fight a tree sentinel so far this run isn't as star wars as i'd like so why don't we go fight a guy who's at war with the stars by touching a grace in altus we can align the stars to have a party to fight mr star wars himself radon ride back through caleb and pass the impassable great bridge with some light speed then sign up with the 212 we're level 41 the same level as we were with batman it's a pretty low level to take on radon we also don't have any bleed or other status effects this is gonna be tough at least I thought it was going to be. Turns out we just deal a lot of damage and I'm getting better at this fight. First try Radon. Let's go gamers. Since Radon was fighting the stars, they didn't crash into the earth and create a big hole in the ground. After we unalive him, they crash. Whoops. Thankfully, inside we can find our inner peace by fighting a dark version of ourself, the Mimic Tear. It's easy. Take the staff off and he can't do anything. It's really more of a mental fight. Ride deeper underground, jump into the city, fight a dude in front of a chest, and now we have a Padawan. All Jedi kind of do the same thing. They just swing lightsaber, eat hot chip, and lie. I'm calling the Mimic Tier Luke since Yura is Anakin. He's our friend. We'll see him more later. Never gonna betray us, especially not in episode three. Things are happening a little out of order in this game. We need to level up Luke, and the best way to do that is to befriend Ayla Sakura. She's on the other end of Caria Manor, which means that I have to fight the Force Ghost of Loretta. She's not all that hard, even though she resists magic damage pretty heavily. The lightsaber can just cut through anything, even ghosts. Ayla is at the top of a tower, calling herself Ronnie, but I see through that ruse. Talking to her lets us open up a chest back in the Knight's Sacred Ground, but before we go back there, I want to grab the Frozen Armament spell. That wreaths away weapon in cool blue light. It was another option for my lightsaber in the practice run. However, in that practice run, that never ended up being as good as just using the carrion slicer. I didn't intend this to be a could you beat Elden Ring with just the carrion slicer video, but it's better than everything else in the arsenal, so yeah, I kind of did. Whoops. Back to the night's sacred ground, we grab the great ghost glove wart and the finger slayer blade, which we can give back to Ronnie. She'll give us an inverted carrion statue, which turns the carrion study hall upside down. Conveniently, we already have the grace from when we got the carrion and glinstone staff flipping everything we fall to the bottom of the top of the tower and grab the death mark and stargazer heirloom talisman which raises our intelligence by five that's the carrion slicer damage stat so it's a pretty good option after we have the death mark we can go back to ronnie's rise climb up renna's rise light speed into the anzel river main and we can grab the remaining mark and herb we need to level up luke Back at the round table hold, we grab another talisman pouch, buy some Marcan herb we couldn't find in Necronic, and unfortunately, we need some money to finish off loot. So, we'll farm some runes in Moss Eisley by killing Eki Zykes, Z Zykes, Z Zykes, the Rot Dragon. I'm not sure he's explicitly evil, but he vomits rot everywhere. That doesn't seem very light sight to me. Aiming for the head isn't as important as it is for other builds, because, reminder, we're never gonna break an enemy's posture. Just stick to the toes to beat all your foes. Even with all these runes, we're not able to level Luca up all the way. It's almost as though the Mimic Tear is incredibly strong and requires heavy investment to use to its highest potential. Up next is the Draconic Tree Sentinel, but on their way there, I'm going to check in with Luke's dad. He's having a bad day. Apparently Darth Talon is in the area and totally kicked his ass. Pay no attention to the fact that Darth Talon is no longer canon, and even in the original canon existed a few generations after Anakin. It's a girl with a saber staff. Cue Duel of Fates. <laughs> Talon has a twin blade. It's got bleed effects. It's got super fast dance moves. She can also turn into a dragon. It's kind of a lot. Still, the carrion slicer is slicing and dicing like nobody's business. First try, first win. Anakin still seems really sleepy. I'll just let him nap here. I'm sure no evil dark side of the force is going to possess him while I'm gone. Anyway, Draconic Tree Sentinel. I call it the beginning of the no fun zone. This is where bosses start two-shotting you at the soft cap of vigor. There's another soft cap, but you're really not going to be getting health fast enough to make it worth it. It's best to just level up your damage and kill stuff faster. Example, 
Look at how fast the Draconic Tree Sentinel dies. There's a lot of running around at the beginning of the build to get the lightsaber going, but considering we didn't get that 30 level bump from the Grey Old Dragon, it's bananas that we're starting to catch up to builds like Wolverine and Batman. Killing the DST gives us access to Coruscant, the citywide planet. We'll run around on rooftops, stop off at a grace, and then grab the Cane Sword. It's a hiltless sword, so in the practice run, I would pair it with the Scholar's Armament spell, which coats it in magical damage. I'd also go get the Blue Dancer Talisman. That gives you around a 15% bonus to your physical damage when you're wearing 20 pounds or less. I didn't do it this time because the practice run revealed that all of that effort wasn't as good as just using the carrion slicer. That's fine. I guess this is just the carrion slicer solo run. Solo. Carrion slicer solo. A Star Wars story. Upstairs, there's a holocron version of Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, but he's not the hard boss of the area. That's Comcast Internet. My internet died while I was streaming. It was a pain in the butt. Eventually, I got back and was able to carve up the ghost of Godfrey with loot. Everything's going so smoothly, and it doesn't stop here. Technically, we didn't kill Margit the first time because his name is actually Morgoth, and he's back. That's some Clone Wars storytelling. No one's ever really gone after all. So let's get Luke and Leia to work together. But this isn't the Leia who uses a blaster. This is the Leia with a yellow light lightsaber and a bunch of force powers. It's Terrace Kasai Leia, everyone's favorite. And that means Morgoth is easy. Obi-Wan is good, Luke is good, and Leia is good. Although Luke does die, and then Leia does too, and then me. So it's kind of like the reverse order of the movies. We haven't even blown up the Death Star yet. Apparently killing Morgoth blocks off the Death Star tree and the only way in is to blow it up. Leia's idea. She seems smart. But first, Aaron's back to Altus where we'll scoop up the Pearl Drake Talisman for later and kill the Demi-Human Queen for the Ritual Sword Talisman. Pearl Drake bumps your non-physical defenses. Ritual Sword Talisman boosts your damage at full health. That's a total boost of over 50% after the Carrion Staff and the Blue Milk tier. Let's test it on our brother. After riding up to Hoth, we find Anakin. He's alive and survived the attack from Darth Talon, except he's not acting like himself. Himself. He's talking about the dark side. I will do what I must. This is gonna be hard. Killing my best friend gives me a new outfit. It's so stylish. Really helps deal with the pain. Before we head further and fight the Wampa, I decide to kill the Grey Old Dragon. We're gonna be using the Frost Armament on the Cane Sword, and it's slow. Really slow. Like nine minutes of slashing. Even worse, it's only worth like three levels at this point. But it's safe, so I did it, and I popped the pickle right after it died. Now, pickles boost your experience by 30% for three minutes. The effect doesn't go away if you rest at a grace, so I issued a challenge. Let's go kill another boss while this pickle is active for double pickle power. Nearby is the Putrid Avatar. It drops 91,000 base runes double boosted by our Scarab Talisman and Pickle. It's not really even that hard, it's just the same thing as an Erdtree Avatar, but it sprays rot forward after the booty slam. It's very easy to dodge, just roll to one of the sides and don't get hit with the rotten booty. Now we should be able to handle the Fire Wampa at the top of Hoth. That's blocking the Death Star. I've gotten really good at this fight so I don't die, other than, you know, other than the time that I died. Whoops. There's not really much to say about this boss fight. I kind of just stick to the ankle in phase one, then hit the stump in phase two. You could hit the eye in its chest or the head or the wrists to deal more damage in the second phase than hitting the stump, but running around like that gets me killed a lot, so I just stick to the stump. It's pretty easy and pretty fast. Then we run up the hill, ride up the chain, and blow up the Death Star. Suddenly we're in a bunch of crumbling ruins. I'm sure the next bosses are going to be just as easy. Crumbling for Ramazula. What a wonderful place. There's angry beastmen, dragons that fall from the sky, and my favorite, the god-sith duo. Always two there are. An apprentice and a master. The apprentice is skinny, likes to use a twin blade, and catch your rolls with the late hits. He's a dick. The master is faster and puts you on blast fast with stabs and slashes that give you gashes and rashes, firebombs to turn you to ashes. He's also a dick. Nobody likes this boss fight. There's a small mercy though, Commander Cody is available outside to be summoned. He's big, tough, and strong too. He's the first member of the 2-1-2. Three versus two turns the odds in our favor, eventually. I still die three times, but after that I get the rhythm and can take down one god sith so we can fight the other one 3v1 style, then kill that one fast enough before it summons the other one back. That's kind of how you gotta do it. Speaking of sith, let's go fight another one. Back in Hoth, we can fight Count Dooku. He was a big problem for Link and an even bigger problem for Wolverine. Batman only managed him by sneaking around him, but Obi-Wan? He's able to fight him and kill him first try. Then we can grab another sacred tier, the last kyber crystal we need to finish off our 
our lightsaber at plus 25. Back to Faramazula, I miss the swag jump, but land it the second time, as is tradition. Then I grab the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two, massively boosting our physical resistances, just in time for the Draconic Three Sentinel Three. Maybe I should call him the Draconic Three Sentinel. He hits us just as hard as he did before and has just as much health as he did outside Borisan, but I have to do it without a paddle on this time. That's harder. I died, but then I came back more powerful than he could possibly imagine. The Draconic Three Sentinel was blocking Malekith, a Sith who likes to pretend he's a feeble old man before doing a lot of backflips. It's a classic Sith move. Phase one, he throws a bunch of rocks at us, which I can dodge sometimes and can't dodge others. That's a skill issue. Phase two is where things get serious. He starts slamming and jamming with a sword that does damage over time. He's also really fast and jumps halfway across the world at a moment's notice. Generally, while jumping, he also shoots a few beams that do damage over time too. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not I think he's cool or bullshit. Today, I think he's bullshit, but I beat him on attempt number four. Honestly, not that bad for the Black Blade. Killing him warps us back to Coruscant, which has been covered in ashes of the Death Star. It seems inconvenient, but trust me, it's way better than having a Death Star above your city. Here we confront Senator Palpatine. Apparently, he was a Sith Lord the whole time. I know losing to an old man is embarrassing, but let me explain. Beating Gideon is generally easy because he has like no posture. With even the lightest weapon, you can just walk forward, hit him, and it'll interrupt his casting. But if you're using a weapon that's even lighter than the lightest weapon, like a weapon literally made of light, it won't interrupt him. So he's gonna throw swords, discs, fire, pretty much everything but the kitchen sink. And those attacks are huge, they're fast, and they deal a ton of damage. So I don't really feel bad about how hard Gideon was this time. On the Link video, that was a skill issue, but here, using the Carrion Slicer is just kind of bad for Gideon. It's great for other bosses, bad for Gideon. Eventually, we do take that W, and somehow, Godfrey has returned. It makes sense, I suppose. The last Godfrey we killed was a holocron, so what's different this time? Eventually, at 75%-ish HP, Godfrey decides to stomp harder than he was stomping before. This makes a big air blast that covers almost the whole arena. The first one's really slow, but after that, it just replaces his normal stomp. I'm pretty bad at dodging it, but I'm getting better. Phase two, he takes off his armor and starts going fast. He'll start grappling. In one fight, he rips Luke in half. In another, he rips me in half. Thank you. <clears throat> Third try I beat him. Episode 6. Of course, we can't go into the final boss without running some errands. Ritual Shield Talisman gives us more damage resistance at full health, and we'll activate Grievous's Great Rune to raise all of our stats by five. Now, we'll head into Radagon, the final boss, and beat him first try. Second try. As long as I don't run out of magic. Okay, let's try it with the rune active. I wanted to do a few ocular pat-downs before spending rune arcs to boost the stats, and holy guacamole, why did that nearly double my damage? I was so stunned by the damage increase, I died again. Whoops, Radagon isn't the issue. I mean, sometimes he is, but he's a good boss. Elden Beast is a bad boss, and I wish it was an optional boss, because it ruins the fun of Radagon. Instead of getting to really feel the pressure of Elden Ring's chosen vessel hammering down on you, Radagon starts to feel like a chore you have to get through to fight a worse boss. All in all, it me 11 tries to get through here. Our final time, 6 hours, 40 minutes, 47 deaths, and 24 bosses slain. Not quite as good as Wolverine, but considering we didn't get that early 30 level bump, I think that's still pretty impressive. I'll drop Obi-Wan in the B tier for now, but reserve the right to change that up later. If you want to watch me do these runs live, join my Patreon. Supporting the channel helps me get these videos out as fast as possible. And if you want to watch me build more characters in Dungeons & Dragons, I have a channel where I've done that 400 times. Go check it out.